This is by far the worst product I have ever assembled in my life. Hello and welcome to the Bad Racer channel. So ever since I got my Logitech Direct Drive Wheel, I noticed straight away that the cockpit I had was not up to the standard that I needed. So after a few months and much research, I finally settled on getting the Track Racer TR80 MK5 along with the GT style bucket seat. So in this video, I'm going to do the setup, talk through why I went for this particular model. This took six hours from start to finish to put all of this together. I'll show you what it looks like on the site. So if we go to Sim Racing, Sim Racing Frames, here we have all the options that they have available. And I have opted to go for this one, the TR80 Racing Simulator MK5. Why did I choose this one? Well, the price to start with, at the time of buying this, there's a saving on it as well. So that helped. And just looking at it, it looked as if it was going to be sturdy enough for exactly what I needed. When you click onto this, you have all the added extras so you can get whatever you want to suit your needs. I opted to get the GT style fixed fiberglass seat. But when added to the car, we had £465. That was with the £84 saving because it was on sale. And then the bucket seat was £370. So it came to £834, but then there was a £10 delivery charge as well. So all in all, £843 for this setup. Once I placed the order, I had a confirmation email. And on that email, there was a link to the manual. So rather than it coming in the boxes, they send you a link. And to be honest, the instructions were relatively easy to follow. But we're getting to it now and you can have a look for yourself. Task one was obviously to get rid of the old rig get it all taken apart but why is it when you start a task there's always something that needs to distract you with the old rig out of there i got everything from boxed and laid out and started to assemble the bottom of the frame on the instructions it recommends that these two bars need to be set at 380 millimeters apart and i thought well i'll just do them all up nice and loosely and then i'll slide it down into the place well, this did not want to slide into place. So you'll see I started to hit it and try push and pull it. And as a result, I damaged some of the paintwork. It could definitely do with having another coat or two because the whole rig scratches like this. I learnt my lesson from the first time round. So when I was adjusting these seat brackets, I made sure I put them roughly at the recommended distance to prevent any more scratches. I've slowed this part of the video down so you can all have a laugh at my expense. I'm looking for the two side supports which are 780mm in length. And I'm about to realise why it's really important to read the instructions clearly. I've already realised that the two bars that are there are the 780mm in length. I spent the next 40 minutes trying to rectify that problem. The front end of the cockpit went together as slow as the back end of the cockpit. So I was happy when I got the seat out and it was only four bolts to put these brackets on. This was by far the easiest part of the assembly. On the Track Racer website, it states that the Logitech G Pro wheel is compatible with the standard wheel deck, and I'm about to find out that that is not the case. So the two stops that I've highlighted in red there, they're obviously mounted to the bottom of the wheel. You can't take them off, you can't move them. So it is what it is. They're stopping the wheel from being pushed back any further, which is stopping you from putting the bolt into that middle hole to clamp it down. Luckily, Logitech supply you with a clamp, which has done the trick for now until I get around to drilling that hole out so I can line the bolt up. And please excuse the washers on the back of the bolt because I still haven't got smaller bolts. 
this is about six hours into the build now i'm just going around putting all the track racer caps on the end of all the bars to cover up any holes the poor dog's been watching me for the past six hours and even he needed a sit down I didn't realise how awkward it was going to be to get this rig into position. It took me about five minutes. And at that point when I sat down, I didn't know whether to laugh, cry, tears of joy because I finished it, or tears of sadness because I wasted six hours of my life. Okay, so on to the pros and cons now. We'll start with the pros. Up first, this rig is absolutely solid. I've up my brake force now to 65 kilogram, and there's literally no flex whatsoever in the wheel plate. And also the steering wheel is set at 11 newton meters and again there's no flex whatsoever so it does not move at all two i got the gt style bucket seat and um, i've had a good few hours racing in this now and i've got no complaints of sore back or anything else so bonus there's also plenty of adjustment on the seat to get your perfect seat in position you can tilt it back and also you've got the seat slide just like you would in a normal car You've got plenty of optional extras to choose from on the Track Racer website, from keyboard mounts to extra monitor mounts, whatever you need basically, they've got it covered. There's lots of adjustments to find the perfect driving position. You can move this thing up, down, back, forth, wherever you need it uh, to be as comfortable as possible. And lastly, spare parts. So I have a bag left over, plenty of little bits and bobs. So if you do lose anything along the way in the assembly process, you should have enough left over to cover you. At least I hope they're all spare parts anyway. And over to the cons. So up first, the assembly time. Um, six hours to build, it's a bit of a joke. And I hope that track racers, HR and management are watching this because yes, it is me who sent you the invoice for a day's labor as well as a reimbursement for a massage because my back was killing after I built it. <laughs> Number two, the paint scratches easily. When you are adjusting this to get your driving position, the paint is thin and you are likely to scratch it. They could have done with another two coats, I reckon, to prevent that from happening. Number three, as you've seen earlier, even though it states on their website that everything's compatible with the Logitech G Pro, um, the steering wheel does not line up with the drilled hole on the wheel plate. Luckily, Logitech supply you with a clamp, so that is doing the job for now. Next up is the adjustments are fiddly. So when you are trying to move this around to get into your driving position, you will need to be patient as nothing moves easily, I will say. So any adjustments you make, it will take you a while to do. So there you have it, the good, the bad and the ugly of the Track Racer TR80 MK5. If this video has been helpful and you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And please stay tuned for the next video, which will be how it affects my actual driving performance.